we essentially take uh, 2D content and add what we call depth layers to that content. So create 2D plus depth and basically we display that onto our displays so it gives you the perception of 3D depth in and out of the actual display. Essentially it's um, a hardware-software combination so, um, and there's, there's three elements that work together to give the overall solution. So initially we have a, a lenticular lens which is carefully bonded to a, a 2D module um, and then the, we have a software element which actually looks after uh, redirecting the light to each sub-pixel of the actual 2D module. So we, we correct the light so when it comes through the lens to the viewer it looks exactly as we want it, at the high level quality and in 3D. Creating a, what we call an ecosystem, which is a combination of software, being able to stream uh, the content in software form and to provide the hardware for the 3D uh, content to be viewed on. So you, you can't really do each element without the other. It has to be a combination of the three. So when you've got a display that's C-Cubic enabled, you can actually stream 3D content directly to it. As you do with a Netflix film download, in time you'll have a 3D button essentially, and whoever the platform provider is, and you select that 3D content to show on the display. Once we receive the actual requirements and the specification that the client's looking for, um, we'd, we'd normally be given or we'd select a 2D LCD panel um, and we'd sort of design a lens to actually suit the, the pixel, sub-pixel layer of that panel. So we go through a design process and a simulation of, of lens manufacture. Um, and then this, this typically takes about four months to go through this initial design. Uh, once we've got initial prototypes, we then start manipulating the, uh, uh, the content uh, in render form and actually you know, display that on the final solution. So it's, it's a relatively straightforward process once we understand the client's specific requirements initially. We're very proud to be working with um, uh, a number of tier ones at the moment. Um, we're, we're striking a balance between marketing to the OEMs, the, the car manufacturers, and, and working with the tier ones that are supporting those OEMs. And um, it, it's difficult, I'd love to say more, but we'll see probably towards the end of 2023, early 24, our displays actually going out in production vehicles as such. display engineers and uh, it may seem strange for some why we're here but um, I was looking to to sort of progress our technology onto the next stages and uh, whilst we're we're doing fantastic work with instrument clusters central displays and rear entertainment systems I'm looking at the next levels to actually look at mirror replacement technology where the displays come inside the vehicle and we're representing what's happening all around the vehicle on a display inside the actual uh, car cockpit itself. Um, the engineers and the, uh, the attendees at the show are, are just hitting exactly the, the hole we've had for that and we're, we're getting a lot of inquiries and, and good leads in terms of being able to capture content, um, so the visual from the camera as well as the LiDAR and the radar depth sensing as well. So through the engineers we're talking to, they're able to combine that tech, we can basically suck that information into our world and then display in a, a 3D uh, representation to the actual driver. So yeah, it's been a fantastic show for us. First time we've been here and we will be back again. We've made some great contacts with, again, names I can't say, but uh, yeah, thank you for uh, a great show. Thank you.